Currently a 12 hour drive up north. I'm here with my buddy John from the Lost Lakes channel and we're here at Puckasa National Park. And over the next couple days, we're gonna be paddling down the Puckasa River, down to the Lake Superior coast and then heading up the Puckasa coast to our takeout point. It's gonna include whitewater paddling, big old portages, big lake paddling, fishing, beautiful scenery, hopefully seeing some wildlife and obviously all the random bits and bots and bobs and boops that could be included in a longer trip. So I'm so stoked to be here. We're in it, we did it, let's do this. Yeah, look at how small the river is right now, eh? Yeah. We'll see what it's like. Free. Happy I brought a pin kit. That's what this is. This is in case one of our canoes gets stuck. This will help us get out. Without it, we could be in a lot of trouble. What? There's a strainer. No, it's really deep, but there's a strainer here. Sorry, dude. I can't get my nose around. Can you get back up a little? Oh. You okay? Yep. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go help John. I'm here, buddy. It's so hard to turn here. Yeah. I was worried if I caught my nose on that rock. Yeah. It could actually kill me. You gotta paddle hard to get around this. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god. <laughs> I saw what was happening, I did not like it. <laughs> What a way to start. What a way to start. This is not a how-to guide. This is a, a bad start for me, for my confidence. So I was very close to a pin on not deep water, like you we were just saying. And yet, I still made the mistake and it took all my force to get it off that rock and if the water was any stronger I wouldn't have been able to and it would have pinned for sure. It was like right on the threshold. I was extremely lucky. Trip ender right there. Could have ended the trip right there. We would have had to go back out and Xander would have gone and done some solo trip. But <sighs> just gonna have to play it safer. Be smart. Yeah, water's moving. It's stronger than it looks. 
always. It can take you in a second and you can be in a dangerous situation before you even know it. Yeah. It's pretty steep and narrow. There's a decent flow to it. It's not runnable, that's for sure. We could maybe line it. There might be a portage to the river right here. I think I'm gonna line it, wait it. No, 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 no. <sighs> this is exactly where the Baird brothers pinned in that video. Right on that rock. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So we're at the beginning of the river here, so it's quite narrow. The water levels are also not extremely high, so water flow is not super voluminous. Rocks are everywhere, hazards are everywhere. This section of the river is supposed to be quite difficult. Um, lots of hazards, strainers, rocks, those types of things. So it'll be um, a tough two days, especially tomorrow. We're gonna push as far as this falls, um, Kohler Falls. Camp there tonight and then big set of rapids tomorrow. Sorry, long set of rapids tomorrow. What a start to the trip. Just a huge reminder we gotta take this one slow and that there could be pretty serious consequences if we, we don't. We really are out there. It's hard to backtrack at this point. Yeah, we're in it. And wrapping a canoe or pinning a canoe or, oh my God, if, some, if one of us gets hurt, it's, it's really serious out here. So Tomorrow's supposed to be a really difficult day. It, it'll be much longer sections of what we were doing today. Log jams, pullovers, we're gonna have to wade line. Maybe we can run some bits. It's gonna be tough. I'll be one of the tougher parts of the trip. Looking forward to it. Dinner time, time for food. Dinner time, it's time for food. Hello there, love. Hello. So tonight, a couple sausages with chicken pot pie that I dehydrated. I literally took a chicken pot pie from the store that was pre-made, heated it up, threw it in the dehydrator, Bada bing, bada boom. This mashy dry stuff. That rehydrated really nicely. It's kind of like a mashed potato consistency. Oh my God, it tastes like a chicken mashed potato. Chicken pot pie mashed potato. Oh, it's perfect, so delicious. Quite the little scratch in there, eh? Yeah. Oh, that's just beautiful. <laughs> it's been a day. Yep, we're off to a good start. I don't necessarily know about good, but it's a start. It's sarcasm. Oh, I didn't get it. She's all scraped up. So before this trip, I had to do a lot of prep work on Patches because Patches is my canoe name and I absolutely love her. But there's a hole underneath the front seat, which I knew about for a long time since I got the canoe used but I've never patched it until I saw it starting to come through the other side, which is crazy because there's a hole right through my canoe and I didn't even know if I was leaking water or not. So before this trip, I uh, did a whole patchwork with Kevlar on both sides, on the inside and the outside. It took uh, a couple days, it was a lot of work, quite a bit of headaches were had, but we got her done. And uh, Patches has a couple more patches on her. Not only that, we replaced the yoke because that was completely broken. We got her nice and outfitted for this trip and uh, quite happy with where she's at.
two sausages for Xander, none for John. Here on the puck, we'd call these here sausages done. That's what we do on the puck. We, uh, that's how we talk. Stop it, Jonathan. Here's one for you. <laughs> Your face. I could have grabbed it so easily. Your face. No, these I are both for me, silly John. Already had two Smokies. They were bigger than those. Hey. Quite satisfied. Don't it's not talk about, about the, the size. inadequate size of my it's how you use it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hey John. Hey. How'd you sleep? Pretty good, you? Yeah, good man. It's in the freezer. What food? Oh, all the food you have? All my dehydrated food. All your dehydrated food. In the freezer. All your dehydrated food. All of it. How much dehydrated food is that? Over a th just over a third of my food. And one of my food barrels so light. Oh, it just like ruins my meal plan so bad. So we've decided to press on. Xander was good to do whatever we needed to do, but uh, I can't bear to go back up those that section and then back down it as well. Just gonna press on, like I'll have to ration our food a bit more, eat significantly more fish. I have no, no doubt in our ability to catch fish here, especially on Lake Superior. I fish Lake Superior a lot, so we'll make do. Uh, maybe we'll find some something to forage, like fiddleheads. And uh, I'm a survivalist now, apparently. It's chili on land with cheese. Oh, wow. That's good. Please have some. I'm so hungry. I forgot <laughs> my food. This guy. The river seems pretty tame here. We're gonna put in wade and line and wade and line and portage and bushwhack and wade and line and portage and bushwhack. It's gonna be a day. Pretty damn intimidating. Might not look like much, but goes on like that for a couple kilometers. One step at a time. 
We portaged a bit further. We are at the lower campsite of Polar Falls. We thought we were a lot further than we were. Unfortunately, we're not. Anyways, we found a paddle. It's a little bit longer than my normal paddle. I might bring it. I was hoping for a longer paddle than here one is, so. Yep. This was pretty intimidating earlier today, but we're getting through it one step at a time. We're waiting a lot of it. It's quite bouldery. It's really easy to try to run and then just hit a boulder and get knocked off course and take on water uh, and get into a really bad situation pretty quickly. So waiting it is the play here. Slow and steady. favorite paddle now. It's got like speed grooves from being in and out of the fire apparently. Whoever last used it abused it and uh, chose. We got through the most difficult stretch of the river so far. Honestly, the whole vibe has changed. It is absolutely beautiful out here. It went from hostile and foreboding to oh, just so beautiful. <sighs> what relief. I can speak for both me and John when we say that. We both feel pretty good to be in this position. Now we just gotta worry about <laughs> the lack of food that we have. <laughs> and all the rapids and huge portages and then the big lake paddling. Yeah, still a lot to come. On the ground? That's my first brook trout. Look at that. Huh? Well, okay. I need a bonk it. Do you have a bonk? Thanks, buddy. Thank you. That was... It's hard. There, I find they're one of the hardest fish to dispatch it's because so they're pretty. so beautiful. Oh, I broke his head off. Dead for sure. First brook trout ever. Nice. Nice. Let's get a couple more. Oh! No, 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 no. You come into my net. Oh, that's what we keep. Oh, I almost lost my dead fish because my dead fish is in there. That's two brookies. Lunch. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, I'm getting fish goo everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna get mauled by a bear. Look at that. Thanks, John. All right, because this is my first time eating brook trout, I'm gonna do one of them in just salt, 
And the other one, uh, John graciously blessed me with some salmon seasoning. Good do. I think it's done, man. It won't be along the spine, I guarantee it. You could start pulling flesh off the, the sides if you want. Mm. But the spine will still be raw. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's like beautiful and delicious. I know. That's why it's so revered. Wow, this is really special. Yeah. It is. And we got through that day. Trying to picture the better ending. No, oh, me either. This campsite. campsite. <laughs> Rookies. No. Two small ones a piece. The small ones are, in my opinion, the tastiest. Only day two on the river, but I'm in it. Yeah. Oh. Across the threshold today. No doubt. Eating my first brook trout in Puckasa National Park with my good buddy John. It was a tough day. Not nearly as tough as we were anticipating, but it was good that we thought it was going to be harder than it turned out to be. But yet it was still hard in other ways. Mentally, I feel absolutely drained right now. It's probably eight, just after eight o'clock, and I think both of us are about ready to crawl in the bed. We're in it. We're in it, John. Hell oh, yeah. There was a moment today where it was like, we're in the trip, man. Yeah, I love that feeling. Yeah. I was waiting for it all week as we were waiting to leave for the trip. I was just like waiting for this moment where you feel like you're in the moment. You're in it. No turning back now. No turning back now. Good morning. It's cold out. Yeah, it is. How'd you sleep? Not bad, it was a little cold. I was you? cold too. Yeah. Steel cutouts, yogurt that I dehydrated at home, and blueberries. A couple of blueberries. Some maple syrup. Bon appetit. I'll play. It's pretty good. Day three, we've been rationing the food, but I feel the, the hunger is starting to sink in. I'm starting to look at John in different ways. Like a big walking, delicious piece of meat. I mean, he doesn't need all his limbs. Second set of rapids, Varian Rapids. So we're gonna to wanna to start river right, come river left, and then river right and eddy out there. Or if it looks clean, we can just keep going.
Beautiful looking fish. Can't say it seems better days, eh? <laughs> Get all the alder just growing in. Hasn't had a fire in quite a while. All right, we're gonna do this same as yesterday, except I'm not gonna use John's seasoning. I'm gonna use my own. This is just steak seasoning. I don't know why I brought it, but I got it, so I'm gonna use it. It is like super tasty right now. We'll call that done. Tastes like brook trout with steak seasoning. It's delicious. It's really good. Mmm. Thank you. Of course, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, great. Great. for the day that feels good we are both extremely tired I think we found home beautiful campsite we're pretty beat so this couldn't have come at a better time Woo. So the water is absolutely freezing at this time of year here on the river and also on Lake Superior. So this trip would be absolutely impossible without a dry suit. So huge shout out to Level 6 for sending this one out for me. I absolutely love all their gear, including the Odin, which is what I'm wearing. It's comfy, it's warm, and it keeps you dry. The way it works is it has gaskets on all your extremities, your neck, your hands, and the suit goes all the way down around your feet. So everything underneath stays dry. Got a quick little relief zipper here, which is also waterproof. And then to get in and out, you got this awesome big zipper. Which I should have undone all the way first. Jump into my Crocs, and I'm perfectly dry, ready to party. Tonight for rations, we're doing polenta with dehydrated Alfredo sauce and sausages that I opened up a couple days ago. They look disgusting because they're in a chicken pot pie bag, but. I'm winging this. First up with some cheese. Now it looks pretty decent. Wiener party! Woo! John and I are both feeling pretty toast at the moment. Good day, long day, pretty beat. I feel like my rapid running ability is getting better and I can clearly see it in John too. Now I have a lot more confidence in this trip that I did on day one or the beginning of day two. Bucket O food. I don't know how you could beat a day like today, but I'm sure there's gonna be other days on this trip that are gonna beat this one. So happy to be out here. Honestly, what we thought was the hardest section yesterday, I feel like might be easy in comparison to some other stuff that's coming up. We have some very difficult rapid sections and some big portages and some big decisions that we have to make. And not to mention all the big lake paddling that we have to do when we get to Superior. So, 
I'd like to say that we're in the clear, but I honestly think we're just getting started. Funny to think that we thought that the second day was the hardest day. What I see on the map here looks pretty tough. We got some C2 slash C3 rapids, whole bunch of rapids coming up. Some falls we have to pull over and portage around. A ledge we have to portage, another falls, another falls, a whole bunch of portages, and then a two and a half kilometer portage around a deadly gorge. I thought maybe after the, getting through long rapids, I'd feel like less anxious, but no, I don't. I feel very much like we still have a lot on our plate and a lot ahead of us. Looking forward to today though, should be fun. Ooh. I'll play. I got a pizza disc. I tried to make what John made. You're supposed to fold it. That makes sense. Slab Rock Falls is ahead, so we have a mandatory portage. rapids then a mandatory 100 meter portage and then we're gonna call it for the day because we're feeling pretty tired it's starting to rain and uh, yeah we definitely need some rest we're both really feeling it so For dinner tonight, I'm having butter chicken pie. I just took a butter chicken pie from the grocery store, dehydrated it, mushed it up, and uh, put her in the bag. I'm gonna put her in the pot. It's gonna be like a mashed, mashed potato type thing. A little runny, a little wet, but it's mine and I find it delicious. Yeah, it worked out well. So we made camp around four, probably just after five now, maybe 5.36. God, I don't know. Early, early. We're expecting rain overnight into tomorrow and we're both just feeling pretty beat. So it's a good thing we stopped. We're quite happy with that. We need some rest and uh, why not rest it out during the rain, so. That's what we're doing. How's that feel? Good? Yep. Yeah, great. Yeah, 
That's, so we're at Fun Falls and apparently you can run this and there is like a big catch basin over here which is good but that's like a good meter and a half, two meter drop. So uh, I don't know if I'll be doing that in my canoe, maybe. So the plan is I'm going to portage all my loose stuff and me and dad are going to take turns running it. To say I'm not a little bit nervous would be a lie. To say I'm not extremely excited would also be a lie. Okay. meter portage then 300 meter portage then a 250 meter portage then a 100 meter portage then a 250 meter portage <laughs> the trick to eating sandy food is you don't chew it <laughs> <laughs> right down the gullet <laughs> Eagle. <laughs> the thing about these dry suits is they keep the wet out but they also keep the wet in. We were both sweating quite a bit, so the wet is definitely in. How do you feel? No moisture in, none out either. <laughs> I feel so wet. For whatever reason, you're making me feel wet too. Okay. So we're at the 2.5 kilometer portage. Yeah, two pants portage around Righam's Gorge. It's easy to miss. We're here though. And didn't miss it. Could have. Could have been really easy. I think for saving us from going down Righam's Gorge, I'm trip leader, expedition leader. All right, as long as I can be expedition captain. Edge. Expedition captain. No. Yeah. As expedition lead, I'm saying no. No, you're expedition leader, but I'm expedition general. Okay? Uh, uh, I really don't know army ranks. I'm not really sure what's best. I'm the five-star general. There's been so many moments on this trip where it's been, just after this next stage, I'm gonna be nice and relaxed. Every single day it's been like, just after this day, I'm gonna be nice and relaxed because it's all, all easy sailing from here on out. I feel like we're doing that again with this Two pants portage, because uh, just after this next 2.5 kilometer portage, it'll be nice and relaxed again. I feel pretty beat down from today. We're still gonna portage our canoes tonight. Maybe not all the way, but yeah. Yeah, might as well. I'm tired. Fuel for the hike. Wow. <laughs> That's wow. That looks great. You're easy to impress. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry. Okay. Sorry. Mmm, that smells good. Mm -hmm. it smells like garlic bread and cheese. It always, it always tastes good. You're smart man, John. We're gonna start the two pants portage tonight by carrying our canoes, and then tomorrow we're gonna do two light loads. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but it's gonna save our backs and uh, just make this whole 2.5 kilometer portage um, that much more enjoyable.
by in the year. So we got our canoes mostly to the end of the two pants portage and I finally figured out why they call it the two pants portage. Because you need three pairs of pants to do the portage. <laughs> I want to go home. Good morning, John. Hey, man. How you doing? doing good. Good morning, everyone. Just gonna use it as a walking stick. Cool. Thank you. Back on two pants portage. We're doing two loads today. We already got our canoes across, so really evening out the load and making it nice and easy for ourselves. This is Ringham's Gorge. You don't want to run that. That's a 10 meter falls right there. Death, 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 death. You can run it up to a certain point and then portage around, but that's not within our skill level. So we are doing the 2.53 kilometer portage around. Turned out to be about 3,000 meters, three kilometers, just over four hours from camp, plus the portaging we did last night. Oh, it's lunchtime. So nice to be back on the river, finally. We are absolutely ripping. Beautiful. As beautiful as you though, John. Shut up. I like what you mean to me. Love it, love it, love it, love it. This is what I wear on a typical day in the woods. Got my inReach, my saw, my bear spray, my thermosel, and my knife all on my right hip, ready to go. Boom, cut some cheese. Boom, get that black fly in the face. Bear, boom. Spray that bear in the face. Branches, boom. Saw those branches off. Boom. Wife messaging me on Garmin. Got it. Day in the life, baby. Day six.
the famine rations are dwindling. I'm starting to look at my companion John as a source of food. The hunger's really setting in. It's getting extremely serious. I might have to kill him and eat him. Here he comes. Say goodbye to the black fly. Tonight for dinner, uh, we're just doing lasagna. I'm doing a regular lasagna, dehydrated at home, and John's doing the vegetarian lasagna. Lifesaver right here. This is wonderful, thank you. Oh, I miss my food, but you're making it uh, very easy for me. And I'll repay you somehow. You can't possibly repay me for this. That's true. No more precious resource out here, especially when you don't get fish for dinner when you hope to. I have food left, but not a, not a ton. It's all good. I'll, I'll definitely need some of Xander's. So no, we're we're going through Much both. Appreciated. Our, we're going we're gonna go through my food and your food, and we'll be good. Yeah. No, we'll be okay. Yeah, we've been snacking a lot for lunches instead of full meals. Ate a couple good meals of fish, and we'll eat fish tomorrow. And we might have to eat John. We might have to. I could. The left arm isn't that useful. Neither is your right. I'd eat your face first, though. <laughs> That's sick. Thank you. Thank you. How is it? Great. Yeah? Yours? That's good. I feel like at every obstacle on this trip, we've been like, as soon as we're done it, we'll feel good. As soon as we're done Long Rapids, we'll feel relief. As soon as we're done Pakistan Rapids, we'll be able to relax. As soon as we're done the two pants portage, things will be in the clear. I feel that way right now. We have uh, a C3 that we have to run tomorrow. It's called Gorge Rapids with potentially high water uh, and no portage. We could potentially line it or lift over at a certain point, but definitely a big question mark. So that's what I'm thinking about now. Um, other than that, we have two portages tomorrow, and then we'll be finished. 12k left of the river, then we're on to Lake Superior. I think we're both looking forward to that, so. Just gotta get done with Gorge Rapids. There are some truly phenomenal moments in nature. It's just about being in the right place at the right time and being patient. You get to experience more of those moments the more you're out there and the more patient you are. Only two more portages left and then that's it for the trip. We're hopefully going to be on Lake Superior tomorrow, so looking forward to that. But we have to deal with Gorge Rapids tomorrow, which I'll admit I'm a little apprehensive of. saw the northern lights last night and they were beautiful, beautiful. I've never seen them up above our heads like that. That was so cool. John woke up to take a whiz and then he called me out of my dreams and into the real life where my dreams became a reality. And I saw a really beautiful display of the northern lights. Great moments. <laughs> nice start to the day. Woo!
the chances of that sun coming up through the valley like that are. But by God, this campsite is magical. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> this is dehydrated chili rehydrating on tortillas with cheese and green onions. We're doing breakfast burritos. That's great. That's a good burrito. On the left is the Pakasa River, which we came. On the right is the East Pakasa River. We are currently at the confluence of the two, which means that hen henceforth the river has doubled in size. Amazing. This is Gorge Rapids, class three. Mandatory run or line. It doesn't look too bad. I don't think we have to run it all the way to the end. I'm gonna get through this white stuff, is that cool? Nice, John. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, baby. That was awesome. How was that? Good. Good, man. You handled that really well. Thanks. You too. Yeah, let's carry on. Awesome, man. That was so fun. You did it. That was really good. This is the takeout right here. That's a huge waterfall. Tricky. We're here. This marks the end of the Pukasa River, the beginning of Lake Superior, and our second leg of the trip. Nice. That's a tough river, man. That was a tough river. I am ready for the next step. A little bittersweet because that was a lot of fun and I feel like we've learned a ton, but it's nice to start the second part of the trip. Such relief, man. It is. Such relief. Finally on Superior, Pukasa River behind me. New fishing adventure awaits. The shoreline is absolutely so beautiful. Around every corner you just want to poke your head in and take a look. Every little point and crevice and cove is by itself is absolutely phenomenal. And if any one of these places, any one of these little sections of the shoreline was on any other lake it'd be a point of interest but here it's just everywhere every square inch every foot every 
kilometer is this coastline of absolute beauty. It's pretty breathtaking. But it's cold and frigid out here, so I understand why it's why it is the way it is. It's a hostile environment. Absolutely beautiful. Good morning. Good morning, John. There's slugs all over my dry suit. So many slugs. Ew. 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 Look at all these slugs. Ew. Ah. I hate their slime trails. You know, I, know. I could be I could be cool with slugs if they didn't slime everything. Day eight. Date. Got a couple bonking sticks here on shore. Some of them have better characteristics than others. This one's nice and short for good beaten. This one's a little denser, but it's long, so it's a little bit more cumbersome. This one's the best of both. It's dense and has that shorter reach for good bonking action. So we're uh, probably gonna go with the two dense ones. Big. There's a pool up here somewhere. It's time to poke out. For lunch, creamy beef and noodle with mushrooms. Just gonna do a Quick dry meal, coffee. Can't wait. That thing's pretty nifty though, John. Yeah, I like it. These are just dreamy sticks for it too. Bone dry. Thank you. I don't know which one to serve first, because it's gross either way. destination tonight, Cascade Falls. What a lovely day.
Well, so it begins. Tonight for dinner, rice and beef. This is seasoned at home and dehydrated. I forget what's in it, but it looks really good. Ooh la la. Mmm, tasty yet delicious. Good one. Amazing day today. Beautiful location. Tomorrow we have a difficult section to pass through. It's called the Ramparts and it has a reflection wave danger there and with the expected southeastern winds that we've been having and we will be having for the next few days, that section could be extremely difficult, if not outright dangerous. So we'll see if we can pass through that tomorrow. If not, we're gonna be held up. It, it might make us need to stay put for a day or two. But uh, pretty tired, it's kinda of late, so uh, good night. Morning, day nine. Back on the water, it's just after nine. We're gonna try to cover some ground today, but the weather's looking a little bit precarious possible thunderstorms and we have to pass by a section of shoreline called the ramparts which is supposed to get big waves reflecting off the shoreline so it could be a very precarious and difficult situation we'll see if we can pass by that today if not we're gonna maybe have to bunker in at a campsite before then and wait it out let's just see what we can do today nice to be back on the water
think I'm feeling a little seasick. Fish, 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 fish. Whoa. Oh. I don't know, it's big though. Oh, it's a pike. Hey! You get over here! We're trying to eat you! You wanna keep it? Cook it up right here? Fish in the bag. That will do. That will do. Yeah, didn't do the best job, but did a job. I'm not even that hungry, it's just nice to get a fish on Superior. I'm I'm very hungry for a, a fish fry. Me too. Yeah. It's about time. Fish in the hand. Season in the hand. Fish in the pan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm -mm. We paddled up a little river called Swallow River right beside where we ate lunch. And there's a little falls up here. Just over there, past those two islands, are the ramparts, that long stretch of continuous coastline. It's supposed to be quite dangerous because there's reflective waves, especially in non-perfectly calm conditions. Today is not exactly calm, but tomorrow is supposed to be even worse, so chances are we're going to cross that today. Alright, 
That was the ramparts. I wasn't so bad, but I feel pretty sick. I didn't know I got seasick. Not 10 minutes after we got through the ramparts, the wind picked up. It is real windy now. That could have been a bad situation to be in when back there. Later, dude. So nice. Yeah. This place feels like the Caribbean. Yeah, it does. If it wasn't for the black flies eating at your face and the cold frigid water trying to kill you. <laughs> Tonight for dinner, dehydrated chicken pot pie, but this is beef, it's called tortieri. Have you heard of that, tortieri? What is it? Tortieri. Oh, tortier? Tortier. <laughs> you know what? You know what, John? Didn't say anything. Yeah, I know, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> it's pretty hot, and if I want to go in the water at any point, it's gotta be now, because I'm sweaty. This is the nicest day we've had so far. The sun's going down. If I don't do it now, it's not happening.
What an awesome place to be. Um, looks pretty good. But, does it eat? She eats. She eats. I didn't realize how filthy I felt until I jumped in that lake and I feel really good, really clean. Really, really clean, John. I feel real clean. Envy your gumption. Can't do it. I feel fresh. Honestly, when I woke up this morning, I thought today, day nine, wouldn't be anything special. But I couldn't be further from wrong. From the big waves to that shore lunch and that waterfall, climbing that hill and being here at this sandy, beachy campsite. Today turned out to be one of my favorite, my, one of my favorite days of the trip so far, which is crazy. And even though if we only have a few days left, it still means that there could be some pretty cool days ahead. Trip's definitely not done. Looking forward to what's in the store. Anyways, it's pretty late, so good night, guys. Good morning.
That got hairy in a hurry. Out there, these waves are three, four, or five times as big. That was awful. crazy how fast things can change on Lake Superior. We were paddling, things were good, and then all of a sudden they just weren't. They were very not okay, and we just had to find the closest place to get off the lake, and that happened to be here in this little cove. We were quite exposed to the wind, but it was the only option we had. Pukasa has a rule that you have to camp on designated campsites unless you are wind blown or wind bound or there's severe weather. And in this case, it was just completely dangerous to paddle any further so we're stuck here which is all right because this is a really pretty place it's quite wind exposed but I, I like it we climbed that mountain a little hill beside the lake a little earlier and we could have been the only people to have ever been up there we could also be the only people to have ever camped in this area of Pakasa Park which is a really fascinating thought we're stuck here for the full day we might be actually stuck here tomorrow as well or at least for the morning. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. It seems like we have enough food to get us through the trip between John's remaining food and what I brought, so that's not a problem anymore. I still might kill and eat John, um, not because I need to, but because I think it'd be a little bit fun. But we'll see, we'll see. He is a good friend. Uh, it might be more useful alive. Maybe not. That was a pretty hairy morning this morning. Those waves got pretty big, the white caps were scary and the winds were howling. Happy that we were able to get ashore and turns out this place was a wonderful day to spend a windbound day. But it looks like the winds are dying down, the waves have subsided quite a bit. And so we're gonna make a break for it tomorrow morning, bright and early at 4 a.m. That's why I'm in bed now. It's uh, not even nine o'clock, but we're gonna try to get a bright head start tomorrow, so, so. I'm going to bed. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. So it's still way too big for us to go out right now. John got an update on his Zolio and uh, the waves are supposed to go down this afternoon, so we're gonna wait. You know, one of the best things about being out here is just being de-stimulated. No technology, no cell phones, no computer or internet. You just get so used to just like nature and doing nothing so sitting around and just listening to the waves and the birds and feeling the cool breeze from the big lake it's just it's all you need I've been laying here for the last 20 minutes barely thinking but just like in a very peaceful state I think everybody could use a bit of this
just after 5.30 on day 11. We are stuck in the same cove. We are windbound, wave bound. It's too dangerous to get back out on the water and there's no chance of that today as we were hoping. Fortunately, this is a beautiful place to be stranded. We do have enough food, even though it's starting to dwindle. We uh, are hoping to get back out on the water first thing tomorrow morning, so we're gonna be waking up at four and hopefully the weather will have changed by then. Until then, just gotta kick back and enjoy the waves. Good morning. It's 4 a.m. We're gonna see if we can uh, get on the water right and early today. Conditions have finally lightened up and we are finally getting back out on the water. Woo! So, packing up our things, doing just that. Time to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. better than they were on day 10, but still very uncomfortable, very nauseating, and each paddle stroke is just tedious. We're unfortunately in a similar situation to two days ago where the waves are just becoming unmanageable and we're exposed, so I was really hoping to get a little bit further this morning, but safety comes first. Winds are too crazy, the waves are too large. We have a few hours to kill, so we're gonna get nice and comfy, have some lunch, and just hang out here in this little grotto, this little cove. While we do have food remaining, I still have a couple meals left. For me and John, John's completely out. So John, peanuts. John's com so John's completely out of food. He's only got like a handful of peanuts left. A thousand calories worth of peanuts. A thousand you? calories worth of peanuts, which could last him. If he's careful, but I still have a little bit of food left. I probably have. I have meals for both of us for lunch, for dinner, maybe for breakfast. No, definitely for breakfast. But that's about it. We are really cutting it close, so we got to get home tomorrow. Really, we have two meals for rice and beef. Yeah. A little bit of chili and then oatmeal. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And then oh, and then oh, we got some lunch pitas and um, salami. Salami. Yeah. So we are we are right at the like right at the edge of all the food that we have. Yeah. The Did fishing has not panned out on the lake. No, it has not. Weather hasn't panned out for fish. No. And neither has our friendship. We got a test with the food and, and we failed it and now we'll never see each other again. This is the last trip we'll ever do together. It's for the best. Cheers. We had a good run. Cheers to never seeing you again. Yeah, cheers to that. Did you... What?
You think we can go paddle? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. We're getting back out there. Are you sure? Yeah. It's definitely eased up a bit. A lot actually. We're at the mouth of the Willow River. John had a lake trout on, almost netted it. Did not get it though. But we're gonna fish here for a bit. Hopefully snag something. I got one! Yeah, I think so. It's a rainbow trout? Yeah, I believe it is. Hey, yeah. oh! It's a rainbow. Hurry up and net this thing, please. Here, I'll just... Nice, man. Oh, yes! Good job. Good job. Oh my god. Woo! Your first rookie and your first rainbow trout all in one trip. That's special. Is that dinner? Can you hold this for a sec? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Feels pretty surreal to be at this point in the trip. We're just a couple kilometers away from home here on day 12. Tomorrow's our last day. 13 days. This will be my longest trip ever. Longest canoe trip ever. Boy, was it ever a good one. Started off a little hectic. The narrow river is pretty hairy. And then realizing we didn't have as much food as we had expected, put a real question mark over this whole trip. Yeah, the early days on the river were tough. A lot of unknowns, but we just took it one step at a time, one foot at a time, one obstacle at a time, and we made it through it. Man, was it ever rewarding. And then to come out here onto Lake Superior, the biggest lake in the world. We saw some incredible waterfalls, stayed at some amazing places, and even being windbound in that little harbor for two days was quite a nice little treat. But it's nice to be moving again, and it's kind of surreal to be almost home, just around the corner. Me and John had an amazing time out here, and getting to spend it out here with him has been amazing. What an amazing guy. We just shared in so many amazing laughs. This trip would not have been the same without him. What an amazing trip. Truly was a dream trip. It's crazy. This one would be hard to top. This trip will be hard to top. That's for sure. So that's it, the pull-out's just around the corner, which means that this trip is coming to an end. Kind of hard to believe. What an amazing trip. Hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as we did. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.